right. Hello and welcome to episode 33 of Raw Talks podcast. And today I'm here with teacher and friend, TCM expert, Michael Hedrington, and we're going to talk about gut health. And my name is Simba, if you don't know me from before, and I work from the Lifestyle Center Living with the Spirit in Chiang Mai, Thailand. We work both online and we also have a physical center where people can come and detox stress, tension, and really reshape their life. And gut health is a very important part of that. So we have a lot of detox programs for that occasion. And that's why I wanted to invite you in today, Michael, to share your views, because I know you have a very uh, unique way of working with health that has helped me personally a lot and also many of my clients. So maybe you can just introduce yourself to the audience and can get a feeling for who you are. Cool. Thanks, Simba. So, um, thanks for inviting me here today. So, yeah, Michael Hetherington. I'm from Australia. Um, when I was like 20, I started getting interested in Eastern philosophy, Eastern ideas, and I went to China, uh, and that sort of really kicked things off. I went to China, taught English, but then when I came back, I started studying Chinese medicine. I started studying yoga, and and then yeah, a couple of years later, I qualified as an acupuncturist uh, in Australia, and I was a clinical acupuncturist for a while, and then. And then I moved into like teaching positions. I started writing books and I started you know, teaching like Chinese, Chinese medicine theory, five element theory, this sort of stuff. And, and yeah, I've just continued that path. You know, Chinese medicine is really my foundation. And, and then from that foundation, I then sort of go off and do things like EFT, which is more psychological, uh, emotional health and uh, like applied kinesiology is also a part of that and just various things but the foundation is chinese medicine mm -hmm. and how did you like kind of what was your own approach to if i'm not mistaken you had some gut or some health problems yourself that you were working with as you came into the traditional chinese medicine how, how was that journey for yourself, if you wouldn't mind sharing a little bit about that? Well, it was more like I had like depression and mm. drugs, using drugs a lot and parties and stuff like that, right? Mm. Like most young people, I imagine. Mm -hmm. um, you know, when I got like 19, 20, I was pretty lost and a bit confused. <clears throat> and, and that's kind of how I ended up on the Eastern path because I was like, oh, I better get myself sorted out, you know, like which path is, seems to have the, the best answers, you know, and is it science? Is it religion? Is it, you know, this and that. And, uh, for me, it was just Chinese med and, um, and, you know, when I started learning more about it, it was just like, oh, my mum's a nurse at the time as well. So my mum was a nurse. And so I was exposed to that world quite a lot. And she used to sort of revere doctors, you know, everything a doctor says is, is like godliness, you know, it's like, <laughs> so I sort of grew up in that space, but I knew something wasn't quite right. You know, when I'm like teenage years, I'm like, hang on, my mom's, you know, she's struggling a bit with health and stuff like that. And I'm like, if she's hanging around doctors all day, she's in hospitals all day, she's around medicine all day, why is health and life tough? Like, why is it a struggle, right? So, I, you know, it was, I was just observing it as a kid and, and I was like, something's not right. So then when I grew up and I was making my own decisions, I was like, oh, I don't think this medicine path is quite on point. I'm going to find another kind of medicine or something else which makes more sense to me. And then, then yeah, the more I learned Chinese med, the more I was like, ah, oh, this makes so much sense and I get it now. Um, and so, yeah, that's what really spurred me into it was feeling lost. And then the, the, uh, Chinese medicine kind of helped me. That's amazing. I mean, that's the seeker's journey, right? Like mm. 
I, I really resonate with that. You know, you, you, you might study religion, you might study anything other than you used to because you're in pain and you want some answers and you start to see the cracks through your parents' belief systems and society and like, okay, what, you know, what's my path forward? And I think that's very powerful to, to kind of have one of these search phases and, and, and figure out for yourself, you know, what, what resonates with me. And that's really what I like about the TCM approach. Either it works or it doesn't, mm. right? It's, it's not so much in between. Will, will you test, apply something? If it doesn't work, do something else. Mm. Yeah. And I think I was just lucky because my parents kind of gave me the freedom to go and travel and try different things. You know, they weren't like, you have to be this and then made it like very hard. And I think, you know, I think that's quite damaging, right? If you put your child under that much pressure and then force them down a pathway, it, it, in my observation, it doesn't work right mm. so i was just lucky that my parents were were relaxed enough to go okay go do go find what you need to find and um so that helped a lot yeah yeah that's beautiful i mean open-minded so you can explore and find your own way yeah so we, we talked a little bit about this before we started the the, the call but I, I always find it interesting the like you mentioned the mental health like depression mm. and worrying and this kind of thing and and the emotional connection to gut health because if you look from a western perspective it's microbiomes it's probiotics what you eat or this organ and it it can it's not bad but it can get very clinical many times yeah. and if you find that the tcm approach is is a little bit more comprehensive maybe a little bit more holistic in that sense would you mind sharing a little bit about that? What do you feel, find is the major differentiation between Western allopathic medicine and TCM when it comes to gut health? Well, TCM is really based in mind-body medicine. Mm. That's really the clincher. Conventional medicine, you know, Western medicine, it's very physical medicine. It's, it's chemical medicine. All right. That's why you get sucked into the whole like, oh, it's dopamine and serotonin and all this sort of stuff. And we sort of separate the chemistry and the body from the mental, spiritual dimension of the human being, right? So, so in Chinese medicine in particular is, and in, in Taoist practices as well, which is sort of what it's connected to, it's a mind-body medicine. You've got to you, you can actually treat both. So you can go through the body to train the mind or treat the mind, and you can go through the mind to treat the body. And you can do both. And actually, it's best to do both, right? You, you have to do both. So um, like when it comes to gut health, for example, um, so in Chinese medicine, they're based around the five elements, you know, fire, water most people are familiar with those kind of elements um, and the stomach organ the stomach and the spleen organ which is really the governing governing organs for digestion when you receive food into the body that's where it goes right that's the first port um, and so if we're talking about mind body medicine the organs uh influence psychology so that's actually where the psychology is influence is in the organ system, which is a really strange concept at the beginning. So if you, they say like, if your liver is happy, you will have this type of personality or this type of outlook. If your heart is happy, you have this type of sort of personality or outlook. So when all your organs are happy, you'll be a well-balanced human being. You'll be emotionally regulated. You'll be peaceful, you'll be happy, you'll be joyful. It's easy. It's easy to be in that psychological state when your organs are in, in a healthy place. Mm -hmm. right? Makes sense. It's pretty simple stuff. So if someone is angry all the time, if someone's um, anxious all the time, that's a big one, 
it's probably one of the organs is probably a bit out of you know it's not very happy and so the anxiety is coming from the organ so the organs not happy the anxiety is coming from there so instead of like treating it with antidepressants or you know psychotherapy and stuff it's like let's look at the organ and is there something we can do to support the organ and if we can do that that'll that'll start to auto correct the psychology hmm. so when it comes to digestion again the stomach spleen this is what's very interesting to me is stomach and spleen governs worry hmm. worry and overthinking overthinking <laughs> if we overthink we damage the digestive digestive system if we worry too much we damage the digestive system and they call it knots so when you worry you feel an, the, the chi knots they say inside you and i think some you know a lot of people can feel that as well it's like when you're worrying your your, your tummy starts t um, churning right mm -hmm. when you're worrying a lot when you're anxious mm -hmm. and that's the chi the chi is twisting itself and it's messing the organ up and then the organs not happy and then it reflects in the psychology right? mm. so so from my understanding of course the chemistry of course food is a is a playing part but if the person's full of anxiety full of worry it doesn't really matter what they eat because all their chi is all their organs are still twisted and mm. their system is still not working properly so it doesn't matter what they eat because the organs are stuffed right so instead of just focusing on that correct the organ function and then the food will perform you know the food will go in easier everything works better so that's kind of my approach or that's my understanding is to really focus in on helping people reduce the worrying the overthinking the anxiety let's let's work at that level to treat digestion mm. and it works most of the time it works like it's it's yeah it works <laughs> i mean it's really tied to the nervous system too right if you're if your body's stressed and then, then it's in a survival state and if it's in a survival state digestion naturally shuts down right all the cells go into defensive mode and like you said it doesn't matter as much what you put into your mouth at that point because anything will will be treated would be treated as an invasion more or less the body is very protective so that's yeah, right. i can definitely resonate with that just getting the stress levels down and then yeah organ function will naturally restore that's right that's right so yeah so that's right so learning to calm the nervous system to break out of the worry patterns all this sort of stuff mm. is a major component of correcting digestion yeah so what's the balance if you look at if you take like allopathic medicine western medicine mm -hmm. a lot of it's based on chemistry just like you said you know pharmaceutica or um surgeries or it's, it's a very practical you, you go in and you fix something it's more like a sometimes it's more like a mechanical approach you know like let's fix this tire change it and put something in and uh, how how is the balance in tcm with herbs and supplements versus actually working with the with the mind like mm. with mental image and emotions and so on yeah that's a good question though i think it's probably different for everybody um and that's kind of another thing that i'll bring up about chinese med it's it's a very individualistic approach to every person's got a different sort of dynamic going on and so chinese medicine considers that you know and looks at the whole thing they're looking at all these different factors when you're going to bed you know your bowels um even the the your, the loudness of your voice the way you you, you smell like there's mm -hmm. all these factors which play a very complicated sort of uh, picture of some of an individual and 
once you get that picture, then you treat accordingly to that picture, you know. But one of the, the issues with the Western medical model is they tend to treat disease, they treat the disease and not the person. So once you're diagnosed with diabetes, it's the same treatment across maybe millions of people, right? Uh, if you've got this sign, this is the treatment, regardless of other factors, right? Mm. It tends to be a bit like that. It's a bit like machine uh, factory medicine, <laughs> if mm. you like. Not to not to bash it. I, I think it has its place, um, but that's kind of one of the pitfalls of it is that it's not really individualistic, and uh, so. But but there comes problems with that because if you're treating the individual and not the disease, it takes a lot more time. You know, doctors need more time with each patient. It needs to be more complicated, so it takes more resources to to approach it like that. And mm. the healthcare system is already struggling, so it's unlikely they're going to, you know, change that. Um, so it depends on the person, right? So, he, so again, you would, you would take a, a, an overview of, you know, what is their current diet, you know, you know, all these different factors and according to what they're saying and, and what you're receiving, you can start adjusting their lifestyle. Okay. They're going to bed a bit too late. So, Here's some Chinese herbs. Here's some massage, but also go to bed at this time, right? And try this breathing technique as well. So it's very sort of, you know, it's more dynamic when when you're considering the whole person in that way. Yeah. And what is it that you're actually trying to do when you say correct the chi and the organ in, in traditional mm -hmm. Chinese medicine? What what kind of what's this what is the aim? If we have Western is more pathology, uh, viruses and germs and mm -hmm. what what's what's TCM's take on it? Yeah, I think so they said there's three causes of disease. Mm -hmm. Uh if I remember the them correctly so so one is um, an invasion so you get invaded by something uh, it can even be like a, like a pathogen like wind or cold or heat invades mm. you invades your system um, another one which is quite common is probably 70 percent of the diseases is internal through emotions mm. so you stay in an emotion too long and it creates a toxic soup of chemistry and toxic stuff inside and that if it prolonged that causes disease right so they say it's okay to have all these different emotions right it's okay to be it's even okay to be angry it's okay to be uh you know some of the bad you know bad emotions like i don't know fear or whatever it's okay to have those experiences. It's actually quite normal. But the problem is, is if you stay in it for days, weeks, months, and then it becomes very toxic. And then basically mm -hmm. you poison yourself with your own, with your own emotions, right? You poison yourself. <laughs> so we don't want that. Right. Um, and I think the other one, I can't remember. I think it's like overexertion something like that there's something about your lifestyle where you push yourself and you destroy your system through working too hard exercising too hard stressing too much not sleeping so you basically just slowly destroy your system mm. so that's another cause of disease that would be yin yang kind of right like finding the balance of too much too little yeah that's yeah and we live in a very like our culture is very yang focused mm so there's a tendency towards yang diseases in our culture generally work too much workaholism play you know staying up late even i was heard the other day like having lots of emotions like changing from one emotion to the next like rapid emotions lots of emotion like drama is what i picked it up mm. as. like going through lots of dramatic experiences all the time smashes your system Mm. you can't so it's actually better it's healthier to have more stable emotions consistent stable emotions is healthier for you basically mm. 
Um, and, you know, what it comes down to as well, so there's stagnation is a big factor. So I say it's, and they say it as well, it's like it's the precursor to most diseases. So if you get too stagnant, like a pool of water, I say, a pool of water that doesn't move becomes what rancid, becomes stagnant, becomes mosquitoes, disease. Mm. So that's the same. Our body's mostly water, right? So if we just stagnate and our system doesn't move or clean itself properly, it just turns into a festering ground of disease, bacteria, right? Um, so you have to keep the system moving. Mm. You have to keep the body moving. You can't, you can't be too still for too long, basically. The joints can't stay stuck. You have to move them every now and then. Um, and then the other thing is once you've got it moving, uh, yeah, so that's the key. You've you got to get it moving, and that increases blood and chi flow. So if your blood and your chi is always moving, then that basically means your organs are always receiving uh, enough energy to function. They're receiving enough blood and nutrients so they can function well. And then once they're working well, again, the psychology, everything works better. Mm. So you want to avoid stagnation mm -hmm. and you want to keep your flow of blood and chi quite abundant and quite smooth. And that's mm. basically the foundation of it. That's what health would be. Beautiful. Yeah. I kind of look at it this way. You feel free to, to throw your opinion on it. I, a yeah. man-made is like stagnation is like a man-made word, right? Because if you look at nature, there really isn't anything that's stagnant. Mm. It's like it's either growing, thriving, going somewhere, or it's decaying, it's dying, and all this like bacteria, as you said, just comes and eats and festers in it. And it's basically nature's way of dismantling, breaking this down and using it for something else. Okay, you weren't thriving, evolving. Let's break it down and do something mm. else with it. But stagnation kind of came up as a way for people to say when you're too still, because that's probably the first time in history, the last couple of 200 years or whatever it is that we're actually sitting still so much mm. that people start to say, oh, you're stagnant. That's why. But it feels like a little bit of a nicer way of saying you're starting to die, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like it's a decay process because you're not you're not using it. So you start to decay. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you're right. And how would you say that's related to the gut health, you know, like in terms of, of, uh, of the movements, right? Like we talked mm. a little bit about, you know, the organ health and how to get the chi going and the different factors of lifestyle, how to place into organ health. But what would other things be? It's like herbs, you know, there's acupuncture, like how would you go about to choose what to do mm. in, in TCM when you're working with someone? Yeah, so of course, like the foundation would be and like acupuncture, body work, um, because you're, you're moving, you're going to move the blood, if anything, right? Even if the person doesn't know, you know, any, any body worker, that's basically what they're doing. They're just moving the blood through your system, moving all the fluids. And that's why you feel better, right? That's why it feels things work better. <laughs> mm. So that's a good foundation. Move get the stuff moving, right? Then I think to keep, particularly digestion, to keep it, uh, they call it uh, tonified, is really strength training, resistance training. You have to use your musculature. You have to use tension in your body um, because you can't just be placid. If you're just placid, uh, it's kind of a funny image I get, but, but it's like you have to use the muscles because if you don't use the muscles, there's no reason for the body to break down lots of food to create energy, mm. right? Because you just need your brain, as long as your brain is working and, you know, your organs are functioning good enough to keep your brain alive, that's all you need if you're not doing anything, right? So if you're completely sedentary, and not doing anything, you don't need much energy just to keep, you know, you, you become very placid. So 
the the opposite of that is you start moving your body more you start activating the muscles you start working the muscles you put it under tension and suddenly your body your organs need more energy they need more function so your muscles are going to send signals to your digestion like oh we need energy we need glucose we need all this stuff we need protein right and then your digestion is going to go oh yeah, we need to we need to get things going. So it starts working better. And it's called tonified. So if you want your digestion to work better, you have to use the body, put it under pressure so that it stimulates the whole system, right? Mm. You just can't sit there and hope your digestion is going to get better. It, it doesn't need to. It's just as long as you're alive, it doesn't care. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Right? That's true. So popping like supplements and then hoping everything's going to be okay is not going to really do it. You have to, okay, take the supplements, but then activate the body with strength, running, uh, qigong, martial arts, whatever gets you going, basically. Um, but in particular, qigong and martial arts, like the Eastern versions of martial arts, are really good because they they're very aware of each of the tendons and how to twist the body in such a way that you're actually activating all the tissues activating all the tendons in a very scientific way if you look at it it's very well thought out just one movement in qigong and the way you do it there's an, a mass amount of tendons uh, twisting all over the place and it's very intelligent so it is sending a lot of signals through the system to, to work better and everything works better. But if you just do what is an isometric movement or movements that are just like just simple up and down, up and down, yeah. you're not really getting that twisting effect. You're not really getting all that extra tissue activated. Um, it still works. Um, but, you know, the Qigong, the martial arts, they're really good at activating everything. Yeah. Definitely. And how would that translate over, would you say, to gut health in terms of um, if I start to work with my emotions and I work through my emotions, what would someone notice if I say I have a bloated stomach for, I don't know, years or constipation? What, what are some things that you've seen in your, in your practice with mm -hmm. people? What happens usually when they start to work through their emotions? How does that affect the physical body? Yeah, so probably the most common one is there's a lack of processing an uncomfortable experience. So, you know, they say you're un you're still digesting mm. the experience. Right? Mm. You know, moving house, moving country, changing relationships, changing jobs, they're all very big uh, stress or big change. And often the digestion will go out because it's difficult to process all the changes. Mm. That's the most common one. And, you know, I use EFT. That's probably the, the, the best one that I've come across. And I get people to focus on, you know, what, what, uh, yeah, what feels uncomfortable? What is difficult? What are you, what are you worried about? That's a really good question. What are you worried mm. about? right and once they start accessing that and allowing the allowing that feeling of worry to come up inside them because that's another thing that's kind of a cultural thing is that when we feel anxiety or worry we kind of push it away mm. we don't it feels too uncomfortable and we don't know what to do with it so we push it away and guess where it goes into the organs into the mm. digestion twist the organs further digestion suffers feel worried about digestion, push it away. See, it's just like a vicious cycle of... Mm. So nothing gets processed, the worry remains. And so, so like EFT, meditation, of course, helps um, depending on which one you go down. Um, but EFT I found is the best because you can actually go focus on, okay, can I let the worry come up? Can I let all this tension that I've been feeling for the last two weeks, can I just let it come up for a moment? Mm. 
Mm. And you let you let yourself feel anxious. You let yourself feel uncomfortable, which we're not very good at, again. But we, if we practice it and then you do the tapping, you know, and the tapping just does something to the brain, it helps somehow it helps the brain process the uncomfortable feeling then the worry starts to dissolve as the nervous system calms down the worry reduces then suddenly their their bloating starts to decrease the twisting inside starts to get less and less and less and you just keep at it that way keep tapping on it keep bringing it up knock it out calm the nervous system and then then I would say now's a great time. That's when you go off and you do the strength training. You do the regular body work. You do the Qigong as a way to make your system not only maintain the system, but make the system function much better as you go forward, you know? So your lifestyle becomes a way to improve function. Mm. Always improving function right you don't want to like fix something you know get rid of an anxiety and then just sit there and not do anything with your <laughs> lifestyle right it's going you know, come back <laughs> it just yeah you just get another issue and then yeah. you go to the doctor and trying to deal with it again so that so instead of doing that yeah like correct do the best you can to correct the worry correct the digestion and then develop a lifestyle slowly just do it slowly don't do too much all at once but start to introduce 10 minutes of qigong morning and evening you know start doing tapping a bit more mm. start going to bed at a better time start doing this start doing that and then over time you just your whole system gets better and better yeah mm. So what are some of the results that people can expect to see if they start to do this? I mean, I know it's individual and we're not promising any results here. You know, that's not what we're doing. But like in your experience, what are some of the results that people start to see? Yeah, so just less fear about food in general, right? A lot of people, especially when you get sensitivities, is that there's a real anxiety about going out in public and eating and things like that, right? Are they going to have what I what I need and all this? So that causes a lot of anxiety. And again, that goes back into the system. That causes more digestion problems. You can see the cycle. So if you can get on top of the anxiety and tap on it and do whatever, is that you just feel less anxiety about food in general. You just like you can you feel more comfortable and more confident that no matter what food you come across, you'll be able to deal with it. It won't be a big deal. Right? It's not going to be a big deal. Um, so that's a huge thing is just a really much more relaxed approach to food in general. And then with that, you know, less, less bloating, less constipation. Um, and yeah, your mind gets calm. People reduce medications if they need medications to function. That all reduces. And basically across the board, so as the anxiety and as all that energy starts coming, you know, gets uh, released and your, your nervous system calms down, it's not just, just digestion which corrects. It's across the board. Inflammation mm. corrects. Headaches reduce, you know muscle pain reduces it's because it's all connected right it's all it's all being influenced by by what whatever it is so yeah across the board you can get uh, benefit um, but it does take a bit of work i'd say at the beginning to learn this sort of different way of a dealing with it it's, you know eft it's a slightly different way of dealing with feelings that probably most people aren't familiar with. So it just takes a bit of training to get there. Mm -hmm. But once you're in the training, once you've done a few hours of practice, it starts to become easier for you to practice and then you can go and do it yourself quite easily. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, I usually call it the needless uh, emotional acupuncture, right? You can, 
like you said, tonify the blood, get the energy moving in the body and kind of teach brain and nervous system a different way of mm. handling stress, anxiety and worry and reactivity is something I think about a lot. Like you said, will, will the food be there? Will I be able to eat this? Will I not? And I used to have these issues myself. I remember I was super nervous. I was like, oh, I'm going to feel gassy or I'm going to fart a lot. Oh, it's going to be so embarrassing. Mm. And because I, I had a lot of food imbalances or my body was not allergies. I wouldn't say allergies, but my body was just very sensitive to a lot of food because it was so much stress. And I was kind of fixated on what am I allergic to? What can I eat? What can I not eat? And it was just an accumulation of stress, like you were saying. And and I was, yeah, I was looking all the wrong, wrong areas. So this has kind of been my journey too, coming into this kind of work. It just allows you to feel more empowered and figure out what mm. is it that I want to do, more individualistic. Hmm. It sort of become like less of a victim to the outer world. I see it, you know, yeah. you're like less influenced or less, you know, the world is controlling. <laughs> it's like, it, you get this sense that, Hey, I can handle whatever comes. I'll be able to deal with it. It's all good. You know? Yeah. It's very empowering. It's very empowering. Yeah. It, it doesn't, I think that's that's a big thing, you know, a lot of scarcity. And and I, I really mm. like what you said, you know, move the blood, get the organs to pump, right? The organs really pump and get them to work. If there's just stagnation, then nothing really happens. It becomes placid and the organs become placid. So, yeah, I really like it. And it feels like TCM is really, it's like a fire, right? They talk mm. about the digestive fire. If the fire goes too low, it gets cold and nothing really warms up, right? That you want to promote this fire going. Yeah, that's a, that's also another great point is, yeah, like they really into, yeah, the, the element of fire, right? In the belly, which is what we would call metabolism. Mm. And every person's kind of burning at a different temperature, right? And you've kind of got to find the temperature that burns, which is what your body's designed to burn at a certain state. And basically, yeah, like when all your organs are working well, your chi flows good, is that your, your metabolism will naturally find its perfect place and you'll be burning. You'll be burning at the perfect temperature inside. Mm -hmm. But if you, yeah, you mess with it, there's too many, too much stress, or you smash the fire with cold drinks all the time and stuff like that, you disturb the fire. Yeah. So that's a big part of it as well. It's, it's really like uh, keeping a fire going, but not too much because then everything will, will be lit up and too little and it will just be <laughs> nothing happens. Right. It's, that's really the balance I feel. Yeah, that's right. You can burn yourself out, right? You can burn like that's the yang again. If you're like overworking too many drugs, alcohol, staying up late, you're burning literally burning yourself away. Mm -hmm. um, but if you become too placid, too cold, too still, don't take any action, you become too cold. And then you've got no, you need more yang. So yeah, you've kind of got to find that little that place where you're active, but also restful. Um, and again, I don't think it's part of our culture, like Western culture, we're not really these concepts are kind of new territory. Mm. So we don't understand what that looks like, or what that feels like. Mm. Uh, so that takes time to work that out as well. So what would you say to someone now, like if they're in the beginning of healing their gut health and they want to take this approach? Okay. I tried everything else. I want to mm. try TCM. What would be a good place to start? Yeah, I'd probably say, you know, go to YouTube and check out EFT videos. Uh, I've got I've got videos on there as well. And there's other people and look up, you know, digestion, EFT, something like that. And just try that out, you know, just follow the video, just do the tapping and just notice if it helps you or not. Right? It's like test it. You want to test mm. it out. If it works for you, if you get benefit, then that's worth pursuing further. So, you know, look into more specialized EFT for digestion and 
there's practitioners and all that sort of stuff out there. So I think that's a good place to start. That's free and it's mm -hmm. easy. Um, and then, you know, probably not as specialized, but definitely like the massage, the acupuncture, add those aspects onto there if you can, if you can afford it and all that sort of stuff and see if that improves digestion as well. Again, test it. You want to test these things out, right? You don't, you want to, you don't want to commit too hard too soon and you want to make sure things work before you go fully at them, right? Um, but yeah, I'd say test those things out first and I'm, I'm pretty sure most people are going to get benefit from that. And then just, if it works, just pursue that further, right? And and if, whatever doesn't work, like if you're on some weird diet or some taking some weird supplements, that if that doesn't work, it doesn't work. Maybe get rid of it, right? Just because a scientist or whatever says it works, doesn't, doesn't matter. <laughs> try it for yourself. Um, so I'd say, yeah, try EFT and then body work, acupuncture, and of course, fitness, like if you're not doing any exercise, you have to start including that into your lifestyle, not just for your digestion, but for your over, or for all your organs, for your brain, for your heart. You have to get the chi moving. You have to do it. There's, you, can't, you can't get around it. So add exercise into your process as well. And, yeah. and then I'm pretty sure you'll get some movement on that. Yeah, and then just keep adding to that slowly, and, and I'm sure you'll find something good. Beautiful, beautiful. And if people want to find you, what do they, where do they find you if they want to know more about what you do? Or I know you teach uh, EFT, you have a practitioner program. How do they find you? Yeah, so you can find me uh, on my website, michaelheatherington.com. And, you know, I'm on YouTube. It's probably my big place at the moment. Michael Hetherington, just look up my name, EFT. Um, and that's basically it. And then you'll find everything else you need down those rabbit holes. Beautiful, beautiful. And we're also going to launch a gut health program uh, starting September 4, a four-week oh. program. And this was a very, very good, inclusive uh, discussion about gut health because we had our own personal journey with gut health, mm. a lot of issues. Uh, bloating being one of those. I think all the things that you mentioned today, I probably have had at some point when it comes <laughs> to digestion. So that's why we really wanted to make a comprehensive program and and take in philosophies from different corners of the world, just to make it individualized, just like you said, right? To not focus mm -hmm. on one approach and this is what you have to do. And if it doesn't work for you, it's just mental, it's just a mindset not really finding a way for people to to work forward that's kind of like a platter a buffet mm. you have a lot of different options mm. choose the one that works for you and 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 work forward with that so that was really our intention with with the program mm. so that will start september 4th and there will be more information about that uh in all mm. our channels social media living with the spirits you can go to a website livingwithspirit.com and you will see more about that and you can also reach out to us at livingwiththespirit.com if you want to know more or know what we're doing or interested in a retreat. And it's been a pleasure, as always, to have you here, Michael. It uh, feels like we can talk for hours about these yeah. things. I, I'm <laughs> really interested in this. And this is just so much things to explore. So I'm, yeah. I'm sure you will invite you back soon. I know you're busy, but we'll invite you back soon when the topic presents itself. It's a pleasure. Thanks, Simba. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. <laughs>